some people are saying that it might smell like lady bits. Hi guys, it's Lisa here. And in today's video, I'll be going over a few releases for 2023. Some that I've gotten my nose on and a couple that I'm still excited to try. So let's get right into it. I think it's pretty fair to say that 2022 was the year of all things cherry scented and the brand OG of cherry scents, Tom Ford, decided to bring in that cherry legacy right on into 2023 by releasing two new cherry scents. That would be Electric Cherry and Cherry Smoke. Now, for my disclaimer, please keep in mind that for these fragrances, I'm talking about just going into the store and trying them on. I'm not talking about like having a decan or a full bottle. No, this is just my rapid, quick first impressions. So when I found out about the new releases coming out for Tom's Ford, Tom's Ford? When I found out about the new releases from Tom Ford, I just figured that these cherry scents were gonna be akin to Lost Cherry the OG of cherry fragrances. And to my surprise, not so much. Electric Cherry, to me, right off the bat, was very fruity and instantly reminded me of a cherry starburst that has been liquidified and put into a perfume bottle. It was a nice scent, but not something that I think I would wear. However, Cherry Smoke, that scent was amazing. That scent is definitely more unisex than I would say electric cherry is. Ch electric cherry is definitely more feminine. And it's like, it's a bright cherry. It's very akin to a cherry flavored Skittle. Like it, it's very candy-like to my nose. Whereas cherry smoke, is a little more sophisticated. It's a little more grown and sexy vibe to it. Literally, when I went to try these fragrances, I didn't spray the bottles myself because when I go to try scents, I'm spraying heavy. I'm spraying at least four times on a uh, blotter strip. However, <laughs> I did not get the opportunity to do that because there was a sale associate manning the station of Tom Ford fragrances. So I had asked this sales associate to try both the Electric Cherry as well as the Cherry Smoke. So the very lovely lady took the blotter strip and did the typical um, fragrance associate spray, which would be one of these. Just, I don't even know if it was a full spray. Might have been a half a spray. So, you know, it. I usually, myself, if I handled the bottle, it would have been four sprays minimum. <laughs> but, you know, at that kind of price tag for those scents, I'm not at all surprised that she just gave me a little, little, I mean, it was a whisper of a spray. After smelling it on the blotter, I asked to have it sprayed on the top of my hand. And it was one good spray for each. And I went about my day, but the first thing that I noticed is that I was smelling it and I could sense that I was probably gravitating more towards the cherry smoke rather than the um, electric cherry. However, I swear within 20 to 30 minutes, the scent had pretty much dissipated right off my hand. And I know you can say, well, maybe that's not the fairest assessments of the fragrance because I only had one spray each, but compared to other scents where I've just sprayed once on my hands, something like say Baby Cat from YSL, that packs such a punch and lasted the entire day. Not only lasted 
the entire day I had it on, but overpowered perfume I had already been wearing that I sprayed a lot of. So once again, Tom Ford has disappointed me in the longevity. And then this is just like I, I will repeat. <laughs> disclaimer, disclaimer, this is just my initial reaction off one spray and a spray on a tester strip for these two cents. Maybe if I had uh, at least a good decant to play with, maybe my opinions would be different. For the price of these two fragrances, I was not impressed. Not at all. Electric Cherry is just a little too candy-like for my taste, but Cherry Smoke I could vibe with, however, not for that price tag. And not for that size bottle. That's a little bit much for a uh, 30 mil. In my opinion, Tom Ford, Electric Cherry, and Cherry Smoke, pretty much a dub for me. The next fragrance I managed to get my nose on is Vallea from Parfums de Marly. Now this fragrance I was excited for. I was excited to experience the notes of Nymphial. I've never heard of that in my life. It sounds like some beautiful unicorn in, in an alternative universe somewhere. And I just wanted to experience what that would smell like. Beforehand, I kind of had a feeling that it would smell somewhat like, you know, linen or cotton. Now, the thing that scared me about Vallea that I was a little worried about before smelling it was two notes that are in this fragrance. One is white peach and the other is orange blossom. For me, fragrances that usually have a peach note in, in it are a little intense to me. The peach tends to overpower fragrances sometimes and I feel the same exact way about Orange Blossom. Orange Blossom is such a hard and challenging note for me because most times it overpowers the entire scent. And more times than not, all I'm picking up on my skin is the Orange Blossom. However, after smelling Vallea, I was pleasantly surprised. That note of Orange Blossom is well blended. It doesn't really seem to take over the entire fragrance, which I was really happy about. Neither does the white peach note at the top either. And it did last pretty long on my hand. A whole lot longer than the Tom Ford scents I tried, that's for sure. Also with just, we're talking one spray on the hand and one spray on a blotter. I remember having the blotter on me all day long and I just, I kept smelling the blotter, kept smelling my hand, blotter, hand, blotter, hand. And I was shocked by how much I genuinely liked the fragrance. I was like, oh, this could be a contender. This is so pleasant. It just feels like I wanna wear it while running through a garden of flowers. This smells like, I don't wanna say it smells like laundry, right? It doesn't smell like laundry, but I do get the cottony kind of vibe that was mentioned in some of the articles I read about this fragrance. And it just smells like someone who is in a laundry commercial. And it is a beautifully blended scent and probably one of the very rare fragrances that actually has orange blossom in it that I would not mind. But if you're like me and you kind of have a thing about the note of orange blossom, I feel like this is a nice mild orange blossom in this fragrance and it's really, really pretty. Speaking on orange blossom scents, one of the highly anticipated fragrances for 2023 was Killian's Can't Stop Loving You. I also managed to get my nose on that in store and I hate to say this, but like a number of Killian scents, I just didn't vibe with it. And it was specifically because of that orange blossom. Like the note of orange blossom is just, can be so overbearing sometimes. And while I will say to me, 
the orange blossom might be softer than what's in say like love don't be shy it's still too much for my nose and frankly i actually thought that can't stop loving you and love don't be shy smell very similar it's almost as if can't stop loving you is kind of like a tamer version of love don't be shy but when i sprayed it i was like love don't be shy <laughs> <laughs> like this smells pretty much like love don't be shy to me if you guys have smelled this or if you have the bottle let me know in the comments what you think but immediately I was just like love don't be shy but unfortunately that fragrance is a miss for me just the heavy it's still too heavy with the orange blossom for me to like a fragrance with orange blossom it has to be well blended and the orange blossom needs to be kind of like a background player but the orange blossom in can't stop loving you from killian is definitely giving main character energy just not my cup of tea so the next couple of fragrances are new releases in 2023 that i have not yet smelled but i'm excited to kind of smell the first fragrance up is from armoage and that is guidance i will admit i have never smelled any armoage fragrances Ever. I was tempted to try material because I felt from what I read about it that it was probably the easiest armoire fragrance to try as a newbie because I've heard that armoire fragrances can be a little challenging sometimes but I didn't even try that so hearing that armoire came out with another fragrance I was very excited because I saw some of the notes and the top notes alone had me just wondering, hmm, what does that even smell like? The top notes in Armoise's guidance are hair, hazelnut, and olibanum. Like what is even that? I'm hoping that the pear in this fragrance is kind of like a juicy pear, you know, something beautifully ripened. I'm sort of wondering if the pear note in the opening is something akin to the pear in Jean-Paul Gaultier's La Belle. I am a big fan of La Belle and I'm really a fan of that pear note in that fragrance. So I'm kind of wondering if it's kind of like a juicy, yummy pear like that. Just the top three notes alone, like I didn't even need to look at the other notes. That sounds like a fruity, nutty, incense vibes that I can get into. Rose is also listed as one of the notes and I'm hoping for my sake that the rose is more like a background player and it's not too loud because usually heavy, heavily scented rose scents don't work on me at all. I also noticed that one of the notes in this scent is ambergris. By the way, did you know that ambergris comes from the intestines of sperm whales and is often referred to as Whale vomit? The more you know, people. This fragrance is also getting a bit of buzz in the Fragrantica reviews, and some people are saying that it might smell like some down there lady bits, if you know what I mean. I'm praying to God that is not the case. <laughs> Moving on. The next fragrance I'm really excited to try, I haven't heard many people talk about. Hasn't got a lot of buzz around it so far. And that's a fragrance from Zhirzhov called Groove Escape. First of all, the bottle of this perfume is a piece of art. I love the kind of teal colored bottle with like this paint splatter look all over it. I just think it's really punk and kind of cool. It's marketed as a unisex fragrance and the one note in the top that really caught my eye was Elemi. Ever since trying Baby Cat and smelling Elemi in a perfume for the first time, I now want to go seek out more fragrances that have the note of Elemi in it. So as soon as I saw that this had Elemi at the top, 
I was like, oh yeah, I have to try this. The middle notes as well of incense and mimosa also intrigued me. This is coming across like a beautifully like spicy incense kind of fragrance. And if it's anything sort of like Nisha Ni Ani or uh, Absolute Aphrodisiac, I will be on board with this fragrance. I know I will. This is probably the fragrance that I want to try the most because it has the least buzz around it from what I've seen online. If any of you guys have tried Jerzhov's Groove Escape, please let me know how you feel about it in the comments because I am dying to know what this fragrance really smells like. Okay guys, thanks for chilling with me today in another video. I hope you enjoyed it and until next time, 